G'day ladies and gents. Halloween is upon us once again. Now, as some of you may know, I used to be a magician and Halloween is more of a memorial for me to think about Houdini. He died on Halloween. So I tend to go back, read up a bit on him every year on Halloween, look through a lot of the old propaganda and reminisce on my days doing magic. But that was a previous life. I'm now a maker, so we need to make something. Now, I spent some time going through YouTube, checking out what people had done in relation to Halloween. I came across pumpkins being turned on the lathe, actual pumpkins. I came across people turning wood on the lathe into pumpkins, and I didn't want to copy any of that. So, I decided I'd grate up a pumpkin, let it dry out, put it in some resin, put it on the lathe, and turn a pumpkin out of pumpkin and resin. How do I come up with this stuff? So that's today's project. We're gonna attempt that. We're gonna form a pumpkin, then we're gonna carve it out as you would a traditional pumpkin and hopefully have a bit of a pumpkin lantern thing, if all goes to plan. Let's do this. So, I finally invested in a pressure pot over there. Pay no attention to what's going on back there. That's a video that's coming up very soon. I'm very excited about that project actually. But this is the main focus. After 12 months, Nelly, of having this channel up and running, I've gone and got myself a pressure pot. Now, this is gonna make resin casting so much better, I hope, if everyone who does resin casting is right, which I assume they are. But a pressure pot is gonna eliminate the bubbles in my cast and it's actually gonna allow me to do more clear casting. I don't do any clear casting because I've had no way to get the bubbles out. But now that I do, I can experiment with that so that you can see more of the wood. Because at the end of the day, that's the beautiful part of a resin and wood combination. So I'm gonna be using pigmented resin for this, but I'm thinking I might go a little bit lighter on the pigment so that it does have a bit of a see-through element and you can see a bit of what's inside. Not wood for this one, but pumpkin. Let's do this pour. So if you guys have been following along with my channel, you will actually remember that mold that I'm using. I used that back in the early days. I can't remember what episode that was. I will link it right up here though. The epic fail bowl. Now I filled up this bowl full of resin and wood shavings and I left it to cure. We used about two liters of resin and that was far too much. It couldn't handle the heat, full of bubbles, exploded everywhere. The remnants are actually still right here all over the workbench. It's really hard to clean that stuff up. So in an attempt to avoid that happening again, A, ruining my pressure pot, B, wasting all this pumpkin, and C, wasting all the resin. I'm gonna do this in two pours. The first pour, I'm gonna try and coat all of the pumpkin with a little bit of resin so that it hardens in its position and when I fill the rest of it up, it doesn't float to the top. As you saw, I've got the pine in there. They were just some pieces of pallet wood that I laminated together and that's gonna be a bit of a resin saver so that we can carve them out later and you won't even know they were there. Now it's time to mix up some resin and decide what colors to use. I'm not really sure to be honest. I'm just gonna have to do it as I go. Hmm, I wish I could hear what you guys are saying at the time of filming so that I know what you wanna see. Make sure you leave me some comments down below because I would love some feedback on this project so that I'm in tune with what you guys really wanna see and I can make the content that you're after.
All right, folks, so I'm gonna leave that one for about four hours. I'm then gonna release the pressure in the pressure pot, pull it out, and probably do another pour at that stage. It'll be a good time for me to check out if the pressure pot's actually worked, make sure nothing's exploded in there, and just make sure that we're still on track. Hopefully, in four hours, the resin won't be quite set. It should be hard, but it should also be tacky. Now, when resin is still tacky to the touch, you can actually pour a second coat on and get a chemical bond between the first coat and the second coat. If you let it fully harden, you won't achieve that same chemical bond that essentially makes it one layer by the time you're finished. So just a little pointer there for you that I've learnt along the way. This resin that I've got isn't a deep pour and most resins aren't deep pour. Most resins you can only do about a 20 millimeter pour at a time. That's what the instructions say so that it doesn't overheat and cause issues. With a deep pour you can generally get away with about 50 millimeters at a time and they're designed for your river tables and such. But I did my river table which you can check out up here with this same resin that I'm using now. I just did it layer upon layer upon layer and I did it in a time frame that allowed all of the resin to chemically bond. So if deep pour resin's out of reach for you, maybe try that method. Anyway, we're going to leave this for about four hours now, let it do its thing and we'll come back to it soon. So guys, I put a mortise in the bottom of this bowl, but the resin's not a big fan of an expanding chuck. I'm gonna go back now, I'm gonna make up a quick glue block. I'm then gonna put the bowl back on the lathe so that I can reshape the bottom and get rid of that mortise so that we've got a flat bottom. I'll glue the glue block onto that. I'll probably do all this off camera just because this video is turning out to be longer than I expected, but I'll come back to you when it's ready to get back on the chuck and start hollowing it out. We are finally done. Man, this thing turned out to be a lot more difficult than I ever thought it would be. So you're probably sitting there thinking, hang on a minute, I signed up to watch 
a pumpkin, be grated, put into resin, and then turn back into a pumpkin. This ain't exactly a pumpkin. So once I got the blank onto the lathe, I realized that it was actually gonna be far too shallow, as you can see there, to make a pumpkin out of. I didn't have the time to wait two more weeks to let more pumpkin dry to thicken the mold up either. So I decided to make a pumpkin bowl for some candy for Halloween. Now, this is the first time I've successfully had a resin pour like this on the lathe and used a resin saver. And I put that in a bit shallow as well. So as you can see, the remnants of the resin saver are still left on the corners. I managed to just get it out on the bottom. That bottom is super, super thin, but I couldn't quite get it out any more than I did. So that's a bit of a shame, but I figure this is gonna be full of chocolates and stuff. So you're not even gonna see that. The resin is transparent. As you can see, it's got a tinge of black in it just to darken it up for the theme, but you can see through it. Can you see me? So I thought that was pretty cool. You can see pumpkin seeds in there. We've got the skin. We've got all different pieces in there. I think this turned out awesome. Enjoy your Halloween, guys. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it around. I'm gonna go and read up on Houdini now, but we're gonna fill this up with chocolate first. So let's go and do that. Be safe, enjoy Halloween, enjoy your weekend, and until next week, I'll see you later.